might crack and, and fall down, but we literally checked over every inch of our property and we have nothing. Um, so I, I think, um, you know, we think everyone's very lucky that that didn't happen. Um, but I think it would be scarier, to be honest, to have been in Manhattan in a high rise building and here are open 12 acres. Or as, as we were here in studio with all these lights and fixtures above us, we were a little nervous ourselves. But again, every home is different, and we don't know what may have shifted or what may have not have shifted. So just right. you know, you take extra precaution because again, when you do get to a 4.8 uh, magnitude quake, uh, it, it's serious, and and we just want to make sure that we remind people of that. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing that that personal experience. Yeah. A lot of people calling in, a lot of people sharing what they experienced. Um, we want to go back to Tony Yates. Um, she's in New Brunswick just like we all were. She was in the middle of working. Uh, she just did a live chat for us, was getting ready for the noon. Um, Tony, who do you have with you? Yeah, you know what? All we have to do is just stand on the sidewalk and say, did you feel the earthquake? And everybody's got a story. And so you did feel the earthquake as well. What's your name? Uh, Xavier. Xavier, tell me where you were, what you did, what you thought it was. I was at my dorm at Rutgers, at Rutgers University, and I felt my room shaking crazy. I've never actually felt an earthquake before living in New Jersey. So I was very... I'm Diane Macedo. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, you've been watching WABC out of New York City, where we just experienced a 4.8 earthquake coming out of western New Jersey, about 50 miles outside of New York City. The New York Fire Department says there are no initial reports of damage in the city, but the Holland Tunnel to New Jersey will be temporarily held for inspection. People in Baltimore, Philadelphia, Connecticut, and other areas of the East Coast also reported feeling the ground shake. Baltimore, Newark, and JFK airports are all on a ground stop right now while teams inspect runways for damage. The fire department's also being dispatched in Long Valley, New Jersey, for multiple reports of structural damage. ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky joins me now. Aaron, what's the latest? This was widely felt across the tri-state area. There was a sustained shaking for several seconds, and so millions of people actually felt this earthquake. So far, uh, I've been in touch with both uh, the New York City Fire Department, Police Department, City Hall, uh, the MTA, which runs the subways. No reports of, of any structural damage or injuries whatsoever. Uh, Con Edison, which provides electricity to much of New York City, reports no outages. Even though there are no reports of, of damage in New York City, the mayor's office is somewhat concerned about the potential for aftershocks because people around here just aren't used to feeling earthquakes and may not know exactly what to do. So the mayor's office put out some guidance uh, on social media urging people to be in interior stairwells, uh, not to go outside and, and, and the like, and probably a good reminder for, for everybody. I'm sure people in California, you know, my, my producer is from California, was saying we did drills in school growing up. You get on the desk, you do all this thing. We don't have those kinds of drills here. So while people on the West Coast may be thinking, what's the big deal? What does something like this do in an area that's not generally prepared for it? Well, it, 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 it does set off, I don't want to say panic, but uh, a lot of people making phone calls to, did you feel or were you? What happened? What was that? Uh, because people didn't immediately necessarily know what was happening instinctively because while they, there are earthquakes here, uh, it, they're not unheard of, certainly. They just aren't usually felt quite like this. Um, there are some uh, buildings in different parts of New Jersey, a couple in Newark, uh, some in Hunterdon County near where this earthquake was seemingly centered that may have some minor damage. We're going to go check those reports. But but so far, the impacts seem to be uh, you know, mainly people feeling it as opposed to anything structural. Now, uh, the concern, of course, when you think about New York City, you think about all the skyscrapers and what would happen if there is structural buildings, uh, structural damage to buildings of that size. Uh, are there efforts underway now to ensure that, that that's not of concern? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, I think you mentioned the airports are on ground stop so they can inspect the runways. That's a common procedure. The Holland Tunnel, which is one of the major arteries between New York City and New Jersey, that's uh, just being held up there just so they can inspect and make sure the tunnel is okay. They'll likely do that at other crossings as well, just to be on, on the safe side. Uh, otherwise, uh, haven't heard of any reports, but the, the bills department is going to be with the mayor, uh, who's going to brief within the hour 
and give some information about what the city may be doing to try and make sure that everything is still sound. Anything else from New York officials in terms of what's happening now? Just a lot of monitoring, and they're urging people to stay off of 911. The 911 system here has been inundated with calls of people feeling the earthquake. Uh, of course, everybody is concerned, but so far, uh, the mayor's office says there are no reports of any significant damage anywhere in the city. Uh, and what about any other states? Because we're, I mean, we're hearing Philadelphia, Baltimore. It wasn't just a New York, New Jersey thing. No, it was felt really all over this part of the Northeast, uh, the, the tri-state area, all the way down in some cases to uh, Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. But there are still uh, no reports we're hearing in any of those locations of any significant damage uh, or certainly any injuries. Should the Northeast be preparing for aftershocks here? You mentioned, you know, we don't really know what to do because unlike people on the West Coast, we don't have drills in schools and things like that to teach us. So are there expected aftershocks coming and what do people in the area need to know? I suppose you never know, but uh, the, the mayor's office thought it would be a good idea to remind people that it's a possibility and that was part of their messaging on social media. Um, others chose to make more light of the situation. There was a, uh, a post on social media from the Empire State Building that simply said, I'm fine. Okay. We, uh, we also apparently have some video of the UN Security Council. Mm, it was underway. As, as this was happening, I just want to pull it up. I think we might have that if we can take a look at their reactions. To make use of it. Schools normally form a spine of protection for children, a place where children can seek humanitarian services and normality. Not people. Women stood in line for three hours to make use of it. Looks around. Is it are you feeling too? Are you yeah. feeling it too? And that's the experience that a lot of folks in New York City had. Everyone started texting each other, calling uh, people who live outside the area, uh, checked in to make sure you know we were okay. And I think in and of itself, that's good news because it shows you there are no communications issues throughout the city or the tri-state area so far as a result of this. What we've also learned in-house is that our control room is apparently like a bunker because nobody in there felt it, but they saw my face and had no idea why I was making it because I kind of did one of these. Mm. Um, uh, but it, it sounds like it was stronger in some places than others, Aaron. And I think back to just January, uh, a 1.7 magnitude quake hit New York City. Obviously, very mild there, but how unusual is this really? Yeah, this happens from time to time. I remember being down uh, interviewing then Mayor Bloomberg uh, coming up on, a, on an anniversary of 9-11, of I think, and there was a, an earthquake of, of some size such that you felt the ground move. So it does happen from time to time. Uh, thankfully, there hasn't been anything in recent memory that's been stronger than this or that has caused significant structural damage or, or injuries. But uh, to be on the safe side, the mayor's office is urging people to be mindful, to understand how to behave in an earthquake and getting into interior interiors of structures uh, by, by heavier things. And the mayor is undoubtedly going to reiterate that message when he briefs you know, in a short while from now. And, and Aaron, you mentioned that the airports uh, in the area all the way down to Baltimore are, have ground stops in effect just as a precaution to inspect the runways, make sure everything is safe and sound. But this is coming on the heels of a number of delays due to weather as well. It is spring break season. This is a heavy travel week. So what is this all going to do for flights and, and transportation? Hopefully they can get the runways inspected quickly and hopefully there isn't any structural damage that would cause significant delays. If they could hold a few planes, make them circle, maybe the the, the weights at the airport would be uh, not, not terrible. But as you say, the, this area uh, through the Northeast just experienced some pretty significant rainfall. There was flooding and a number of flights canceled. So the airports were just getting back on their feet when this earthquake occurred about an hour ago. And then also road travel. Uh, you've got the Holland Tunnel now paused. They're holding up traffic there to inspect. They could do the same for the other crossings. We're still waiting for that. But not only is this coming on the heels of spring break travel and as people are heading out for that, but also a lot of people are trying to travel for the eclipse ahead of Monday. Sure. So any sense of how this could affect uh, people on the roads? So far at the moment, we don't know of any significant traffic snarls. Obviously, the, if a major crossing, you know, in New York City, like the Holland Tunnel, gets stuck for any longer period of time, that could be a headache closer to the afternoon rush hour. But uh, so far, traffic seems to be moving uh, 
as, as well as it can. The subways uh, aren't having any impact trains the same uh, through through Penn Station and the like. So at the moment, the impacts seem to be minimal, uh, you know, beyond just the, the flustered folks who felt it. Uh, the president also we're hearing has been briefed on the earthquake. Uh, the epicenter, like we said, was in New Jersey, and the White House says the president is in touch with his team who are monitoring potential impacts here, and the White House is also in touch with federal, state, and local officials as we learn more. Uh, Aaron, what are you watching for? Uh, it, just going through some of the, the different agencies that are all now monitoring, in addition to the police and fire, it is school day in the New York City public schools. Uh, I wondered myself with a daughter in, in the public middle school and the... the uh, the Department of Education just put out that there have been no indications of damage or, or compromise at any uh, public school building. Parents are obviously going to be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. The um, and, and so far, again, that the, the impacts do seem to be minimal, save for a few maybe minor structural issues at a couple of buildings uh, over in New Jersey. And and Aaron, what kind of reaction are you hearing from people who were who are in that area? where the epicenter actually was. So far, we've just heard from uh, people who said they, they felt it, but again, didn't necessarily understand what it is. I, I, our our uh, station here in New York, WABC, talked to a woman uh, who owns a bunch of horses. It, it's, it's nice farmland that you know, Hunterdon County is uh, that horse country, I guess, in New Jersey, uh, and then said that her animals didn't even seem to to really notice. So I guess Interesting. that's good, uh, but different people, uh, we heard from a guy who said his dorm room at Rose University shook, uh, and and people definitely felt it. I know my wife works in Times Square at an office building, uh, you know, 18 floors up. She felt it. So we're hearing the stories. Everyone's got a story now yeah. about what they did or maybe didn't, like in the case of your producers. We uh, saw feel. we saw someone on on that the, our local news station was interviewing too, saying he thought the neighbor upstairs was doing laundry. <laughs> oh. So you get the sense that maybe where you were uh, and, and, and what your brain was telling you at the time may have impacted how deeply how you, you felt. You, you felt. Uh, but it's certainly just given the concentration and, and how densely packed this part of the country is, this quake will have been felt by millions and millions of people. Yeah, I know for us, there's a big construction project across the street from the ABC News headquarters. And so I assumed it was something having to do with the construction when I felt the uh, the tremors. But the, the big news sounds like nobody, you know, no, nobody harmed in this. And, and now they are taking all the proper precautions, trying to make sure it stays that way. Aaron, I know you're staying on top of it. We are as well. And of course, we will continue to have updates right here on ABC News Live throughout the day on this story and our other top stories. We'll be right back. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh, yes, problem. You need Verizon. Get the new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage, so you can take all the pics. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us, only on Verizon. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce me. Which you do you want to be today? At TJ Maxx, you can afford to turn your closet into a place of endless expression with the quality you deserve, styles you crave, and prices you love. I'm gonna do, do what I do. Max, what makes you, you. Do what I do. Hey, cover girls. <laughs> Girls need no filters with the new Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence, where skincare meets makeup first and blend for bare skin filter effect. That is all you new Skin Perfector Essence from CoverGirl. What if your local pharmacy dealt with your insurance for you and delivered your medication for free? It had real licensed pharmacists available to chat with you seven days a week. Capsule Pharmacy does that for more than hundreds of thousands of satisfied customers. Go to capsule.com to get started. When your medication is ready, we text you. Simply check out and schedule free same-day delivery. We make sure your meds arrive safely and securely. Get started in 15 seconds at Caps.com and have your prescriptions delivered whenever you need them. I guess I'm not the easiest person to please. I like things just right. That's why I love Redfin. They show me homes that are perfect for me. Not too big, not too small. Yeah. It's like they know me. I mean, the bears love having me here. Oh. 
We're like family. One of sucks, but it's time for me to spread my wings and find a place of my own. Ooh, <gasps> this one's just right. I know Baby Bear will miss me. What you good to watch, Reed? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. It's June weekends on ABC News Live. Hi, I'm Dan Macedo. We have breaking news. The U.S. Geological Survey is reporting a 4.8 earthquake shook the northeast. That quake was centered near Lebanon, New Jersey, about 45 miles west of New York City, 50 miles north of Philadelphia. The New York Fire Department says there are no initial reports of damage in the city, but the Holland Tunnel to New Jersey will be temporarily held for inspection. People in Baltimore, Philadelphia, Connecticut, and other areas of the East Coast also reported feeling the ground shake. Baltimore, Newark, and JFK airports are all on a ground stop right now while teams inspect the runways there to make sure no damage. And the fire department is being dispatched in Long Valley, New Jersey, for multiple reports of structural damage. I want to bring in ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky. Join me now. Aaron, I can see your phone updating with email after email after email. What's the latest? So far, though, Diane, no reports of any significant damage anywhere in the tri-state area where this earthquake was widely felt when it occurred around 10.23 a.m. Eastern Time. The shaking was felt for uh, several sustained seconds, and millions of, of people immediately started calling 911 and other emergency services. Uh, but according to the NYPD, the FDNY, and New York City Hall, there are no reports of any significant damage or injuries. The subways are fine, according to the MTA. Con Edison, which provides electricity, says there have been no disruptions. In, in power service for the areas covered in this part of the country by Con Edison. Uh, and, and right now, the mayor is getting ready to brief from the Office of Emergency Management. He is undoubtedly going to express concern for potential aftershocks because people in this part of the country, frankly, aren't used to how to behave in an earthquake. So he's going to remind people where they should go, what they should do uh, for the next few hours. Yeah. I remember it must have been something like 11 years ago we got one and I was in my apartment at the time and I remember just thinking I have no idea what to, do I leave the building am I safer inside the building you know it, and my producer Ashley was just saying that she grew up in California and they had drills in school regularly on exactly how to behave so it, it does change things given the area of where this happened and so I want to talk a little bit about that because to someone on the West Coast hearing a 4.8 earthquake, they might be thinking, that's nothing. Why, why does this even matter? But is it calling into question the preparedness? Because for this area, a 4.8 magnitude quake is rare. Rare and, and, and quite strong. We've been looking into the history of earthquakes around these parts since the 1700s. And, and this one may well turn out to be one of the stronger ones. Uh, and of course, New York City especially is so densely packed with, with structures that, that some a little older than others. And so they're going to be doing some inspections to make sure that uh, those structures are safe, especially uh, those under construction. You mentioned the Holland Tunnel, where they'll hold traffic for a bit to inspect the runways at the airports. That's why there's a ground stop, so they can inspect the runways, make sure there's no danger to planes landing following this four. 0.8 magnitude quake. And Aaron, as soon as you talk about planes, I think about spring break travel, eclipse travel. You know, people are supposed to be jamming the airports right now. And the airports have already been dealing with delays because of the recent bad weather we've had in the area. So how is this all going to affect travel? It's not going to help, is it? Because as you say, the airports were just recovering from a whole lot of rain and flooding just getting back on their feet. Now there's going to be hopefully temporary and rather short delays as these runways get inspected from here all the way down to Washington, D.C. And we're now hearing that the Holland Tunnel is back up and running. They have inspected it. They found no damage or at least no damage that required halting and travel there. What are you watching for on that front? Well, we'll watch to see uh, all of the inspections that are going to be done and we'll hear uh, within the half hour from the mayor and other city officials in, in New York to talk about the inspection the construction sites, the precautions that they're going to take, and the reminders to people for how they should behave in the event of any aftershock. We're also monitoring reports across the river in New Jersey where the uh, quake was centered in Hunterdon County, about 45 miles west of the city, uh, where people reported hearing it and feeling it, but uh, where there may be some 
structural damage, not necessarily anything serious that we've heard about so far, but checking out a couple of locations in New Jersey. And we're hearing that all airports except for Newark uh, have been cleared. So it sounds like they're going through this pretty quickly. Uh, Aaron, what's that process like? It, it, it's rather painstaking because you don't want to make a mistake and you want to be thorough with uh, with the inspection because, you know, in the case of the airports, a uh, lot are at stake as, as planes land. Uh, but now, consistent with the what we're hearing from officials that there there is no significant structural damage uh, the airports are reopening uh, the tunnels reopening uh, and I'm sure we'll hear that uh, there aren't going to be many uh, you know many structural issues in, in New York City they would like people to stay off of 911 and Aaron we have the mayor of Yonkers Mike Spano up in Westchester uh, on with us now Mayor Spano I know you were in a staff meeting when this happened what was that like for you it, it was pretty scary. You know, I've been through a few tremors in my time here uh, in, in the Northeast, and they, I, this was probably the worst one I felt. And, and But it was what scared me, I think, the most, and probably scared a lot of people, which is the length of it. It seemed to go on forever, but it, it was only probably 15, 20 seconds. But it seemed to go on forever. But we were in the best place uh, in terms of what how we could react and respond to, for the, the taxpayers of Yonkers, because we need to make sure that that uh, we assessed and we notified and we were able to do that all within minutes because our phones were just inundated. 911 was inundated. Mayor's helpline was inundated with calls and we needed to have people feel that, you know, there was no damage, we're okay, and that your kids are, are, are good. They're, they're safe in the schools and there's no damage. And Mayor, I know you've been mayor for a while. We've been talking about preparedness in this area versus, say, on the West Coast, where they have regular drills and schools and so on, on, on what to do in an earthquake. Is this something that comes up often for you? Have you ever sat down in meetings and talked about earthquake preparedness no, in this area? We, we talk about a lot of things, you know, obviously, right? We talk about the, the, most of the time it's weather events. Uh, earthquakes are not something that's, uh, that's really talked about. About, but it's something that uh, certainly was going to be on my radar screen moving forward. And so what are you hearing now from your constituents? Was this the kind of thing where your phone blew up afterward? Yeah, the phones, the phones, my phone, personal phone blew up with my own 15 brothers and sisters. But besides them, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the phones of the city blew up. And like I said, I think people just wanted to know whether well, there's damage and is it okay? Oh, and then the next one was, what do we expect next, right? And, and that I don't know the answer to, which you, you know, and to hear that, you know, we should expect, uh, you know, aftershocks and, and, and things like that, that will, you know, obviously make people very uneasy, but they should know that, and I'm going to make sure that we put that out on our social media, that that potentially can happen and they shouldn't be alarmed by it. And so what do you, as a leader, uh, you know, a local leader, then how do you react in terms of trying to prepare for what's next and make sure your constituents are prepared as well? Uh, we, we, we start with the basics, right? We made sure City Hall was okay and that everyone uh, was okay. We we, uh, we we put on immediately alert to our, all of our commissioners, including the Board of Education. Uh, we made sure that our structures were okay, our families were okay, our parks were okay, our buildings were okay, our streets were okay, and and then, uh, and all of this within minutes, uh, we then sent out messages uh, on social media and so forth to let the public know that everything is okay and that they should be able, and that they'll, they'll be fine and that, uh, that we basically experience the hurricane. And then, like I said, as we move forward, uh, we'll see what the scientists have to say and, and see how what additional preparedness we're going to have to plan for in the future. But I definitely think you you made a real you made the case for uh, we should be talking about earthquakes. Uh, at least kids should have an understanding that uh, what do you really do? In, in the, do you go outside? Do you stay inside? I frankly don't know, but uh, someone should know. Yeah, I mean the kids need to know, the adults need to know too. I think we're all realizing how little we know about what yeah. we're supposed to do in this situation. Like this, I know you know. Ideally, you want to get under the desk, you want to get under the door frame. Yeah. But you know, if you're in a high rise, do you leave or do you stay? You know, all those right. questions. I think we all now want the answers where maybe before we didn't really think about sure. them too much. When I was a kid, I remember everybody saying, "Go in under the in the door frame," right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that was or. Uh, but like you said, when you're sitting in city city hall and it has uh, three foot walls, uh, I'm I'm figuring this is a pretty safe place to be in. But you said it's still it's still you know scares the hell out of you. Now, as you're talking.
watching. I'm watching traffic moving across the George Washington Bridge. All looks okay there. Uh, we, the Holland Tunnel was paused for a while. They held up traffic to inspect the tunnel. They've since cleared that. The traffic is flowing through the Holland Tunnel again. And from what we're hearing, all of the airports nearby, with the exception of Newark Airport, have also resumed normal operations after they inspected the runways and whatever else they needed to look at and found that there was you know, no damage that needed to hold up operations there. Uh, how do you feel hearing those updates throughout the day now? I, I tell you, I feel real good. I feel good because everyone acted very efficiently and very rapidly to get information out to the public. Within minutes, we all knew it was an earthquake, and within minutes, we knew that we didn't have any, any real damage to speak of and that, and that everything was okay, and that message got out to the public. And for that, I guess we can say we were pretty prepared, so that's a good thing. And uh, what do you make of how the state uh, communicated here? Any, any, have you heard from the governor's office? Yeah, uh, we we have a whole system in place for emergency uh, situations like this. So uh, I was uh, I'm completely confident with uh, how everyone reacted here. And New York Governor Kathy Hochul is expected to speak any minute now. We also expect to hear um, from the mayor of New York City. Uh, but Mayor Spano, what do you think your big takeaway is from this, both in terms of, you know, you talked about preparedness, but, but when you look around your staff, you look around your constituents in, the, in this town that you've presided over for quite some time, what do you think you take away from this? Uh, what I take away from this is I feel good that we were able to respond in a very quick manner uh, to the public so that they felt reassured everything was okay. But I, what I also take away from it is that we really don't have, um, we really don't know uh, how to react to, a, to an earthquake. And that's something that has to start in our schools, and we have to start teaching that. And that's a, a discussion that we're going to have uh, and, and probably in the next 24 hours that will include the Board of Education. I thank you and many other local leaders. Mayor Mike Spano from Yonkers, we appreciate your time today, Mayor. I'm glad everyone's safe. Great. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. And I want to bring back our senior investigative reporter, Aaron Katursky. Aaron, what's your reaction to hearing the mayor recount his experience there in Yonkers when this happened? I, I was struck by when you asked him about do people know what to do, and he sort of on the fly said, we ought to really teach people what to do, yeah. especially in schools, uh, because people here don't often know how to behave. And there's a real question. If you live in a high-rise building, does duck and cover, as most people in you know L.A. are taught in school, that work in a, in a high-rise building, I think interior stairwell is probably the best advice, and undoubtedly that's something that uh, Mayor Eric Adams is going to address when he reaches in the next few minutes. And I want to bring in ABC News senior White House correspondent Selena Wang as well. Selena, what's the White House saying about this? Well, Diane, we've just learned from the White House that the president has been briefed on this. He's in touch with his team. They're monitoring for any potential impacts. The White House is also in touch with state, local, and federal leaders, and they're monitoring to see how all of this develops. But, Diane, the president's focus today is on Baltimore. He is currently still at the White House, but in just the next hour or so, he will be going to Baltimore, where he's there to assess the damage from that bridge collapse, getting a tour, meeting with local responders there. The president, he will be giving remarks today, unclear at this point if he's going to address this earthquake at the top of his remarks or not. Uh, Selena, any more from the White House in terms of aftershocks and preparedness on that front? Yeah, we're still waiting from the White House for any more response. All they've got right now is that the president, he is in touch with all the team. And as we monitor if there is more damage, we could expect the White House to offer any of that federal assistance, state, local assistance, any help that they need. For now, the White House says the president is staying on top of it. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is speaking now about that earthquake. Let's listen in. Uh, we felt those effects all the way up to this Buffalo, New York. So these are wide-scale possibilities. Um, this is one of the largest earthquakes on the East Coast to occur in the last century. So I immediately directed my emergency management team the second we received word of this to start doing damage assessments, uh, any life in danger, and finding out whether there's any bridges or tunnels that are compromised. And so uh, that was the first reaction you'll be hearing from uh, the team that has been working on that. I also immediately spoke to Governor Phil Murphy to offer any assistance and to find out uh, what is happening in his state, which again was the epicenter. Our team's 
been in constant communication with the mayor of New York. We also spoke to the MTA to ensure the integrity, the structural integrity of the subway system, the Port Authority, and I want to announce that right now JFK and Newark airports are on full ground stops to assess uh, any potential for after effects, and we've been in contact with the utility companies uh, to make sure that the gas and electric services continue. I will report that Amtrak and MTA are on full schedule, no disruption there at this time. I've been in communication with the White House. They reached out to us. The uh, Deputy of Homeland, Homeland Security Advisor, who's actually with President Biden right now, surveying the damage in Baltimore, called us, and I believe they felt the effects even in Baltimore. So uh, it's been a very unsettling day, to see the, say the least. But the White House offered any assistance. Uh, Senator Schumer reached out, offered any assistance. So uh, right now, it's most important that we have our structural teams out there, our engineering teams, surveying our bridges, our roads, any area there could be a fault line that is not easily detected to make sure that uh, passengers on our rails as well as our commuters are safe. Assessing all state roads, uh, Commissioner Dominguez is taking lead on that, making sure our state roads are safe. Um, major transmission lines and dams, because you don't always see the effects of a small crack that actually could uh, develop into a real major problem. And we're also encouraging all the municipalities throughout the state of New York to assess for any structural integrity concerns. At this point, uh, about a, you know, heading into an hour and a half after the effects, we've not identified any life-threatening situations, but we are certainly asking our local law enforcement and emergency services teams to be on guard for that as well. But again, we are going to be reviewing all potentially vulnerable infrastructure state sites throughout the state of New York that is critically important in the aftermath of, a, of an event like this. Now, again, I have a few safety tips because New Yorkers are not accustomed to having earthquakes uh, in our state, and everyone should continue to take this seriously. If there is an aftershock, people are encouraged to drop and to cover and to hold on. Drop to the floor, cover your neck, and hold on to something that is sturdy. Take caution near any damaged buildings. Again, we don't have reports of damaged buildings at this time. It is very early in the assessment process. But you know, if there is an after effect, please stay away from buildings, especially our high rises. If you hear shifting or any noises, unusual noises, leave your home. Go outside. You are safer there than in a building that could be crumbling around you. Inspect your home for damage. Check walls, floors, doors, windows, staircases. And uh, if you see any damage at all, you may need to relocate uh, while the event is going on. Again, check your own gas lines and water lines to make sure that your family is safe. So stay connected and informed. I will say this, uh, especially with all the national news about what happened in Taiwan with that deadly the earthquake uh, just this past week. I think there's a high level of anxiety around earthquakes. The magnitude, which Catherine Garcia and uh, Commissioner Bray will explain, uh, th that was a 7.4 magnitude in Taiwan. Again, we are 4.8, and they'll explain the difference. But that's why we're going to continue to take this very seriously and make sure that we continue to update all New Yorkers. So uh, Catherine Garcia, our head of state operations, you'll hear from first, and then Commissioner Jackie Bray, head of Homeland Security. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. I want to reiterate that we have no reports of damage at this time, uh, and that immediately all of the infrastructure agencies activated their policies and procedures to deal with this, because while highly unusual in the state of New York, we do actually have fault lines. Uh, this was significantly bigger than ones that are typically felt in the state of New York or occur and actually are not felt. That is because earthquakes happen on a logarithmic scale, which means that a 3.0 is 10 times worse than a 2.0. So a 4.0 uh, is 10 times easier than a 5.0. So every one of those uh, makes a significant difference in what you will experience and what the damage could be. Um, in addition, we are also tracking whether or not there's any increase in hospitalizations, as well as whether or not there's any in. We've been in touch with AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Uh, their networks are clear now and, and back up and working, and we have opened um, the 
uh, state's emergency operations center. While we're at a level three uh, to monitor uh, impacts and reports that come in. We've seen one gas leak in Rockland County, uh, but other than that, there don't seem yet to be uh, major uh, infrastructure impacts, but we are in touch with the counties. We'll stay in touch with the counties um, all day. Great, thank, thank you. you. All right, let's do some on-topic questions. Governor, has there been any contact with uh, the Indian Point facility in Westchester and any concerns there? Uh, that's part of our analysis of all uh, critically important infrastructure. So yes, the communication has gone out, right? Yeah, we, we, we are in, we're, we're in constant touch with both that facility and our other facilities. We're, there's no damage reported at Indian Point. We wouldn't expect damage um, at this time. And we're in touch with Westchester and we'll stay in touch with Westchester. Governor, can you just say what you were doing at the time that it hit with what you felt and what was going on? Uh, no surprise to anybody here in the Capitol. I was meeting with my senior team talking about their late night working on the budget. And we were talking about how we're going to move the budget forward today. So literally sat in the room next door. Uh, people felt different degrees of movement in the room, uh, surprising, and uh, all of a sudden everybody's cell phones start lighting up and describing what it was. So uh, we were literally right here working on the budget and uh, getting a, a budget done that includes a uh, once-in-a-lifetime housing package may be the only excitement event we expected this week. So this was rather unanticipated. You cannot plan for this. There's no early warnings. There's no weather uh, service that can tell you an earthquake is imminent. And that's why everybody was caught off guard. But fortunately, here in the state of New York, we are masters of disasters. We know how to handle this uh, from you know unexpected snowstorm just a couple days ago. Uh, everybody's anticipating massive crowds for another uh, celestial event on Monday with the total eclipse uh, pathway going through large parts of our state. So so my point is we're always ready. Uh, we have planning in place for all of our teams activate instantaneously. And I feel very you know, comfortable about that. But again, these are emerging situations. It could be over, but also there could be another effect. And we have to be prepared for that and, and warn New Yorkers to be particularly uh, vigilant in the, the days uh, following an original earthquake. Governor, I assume your team has, has analyzed the, the aftershock forecast. What what do they show? What what should we anticipate? Uh, Commissioner Bray, the former head of uh, one of the heads of the National Weather Service, is this something you can predict? Uh, no, it's yeah, little, yeah, we don't, we don't, um, don't predict. We don't predict the aftershocks aren't predictable, and so um, we'll stay, we, you know, obviously we'll monitor USGS's um, information, uh, but we're not looking at these aren't forecastable events. Governor, one more, one more on, on the ground stop uh, at JFK and the airports. Is there a timeline for? How that gets we just spoke to them. Do they have a timeline on that? Okay, on the we, we don't have a timeline yet. What they're doing is uh, really confirming that the air traffic control towers are safe to operate in. Um, so as soon as we know, we'll make sure that that's public information. Which airports were those again? I'm sorry. JFK and Newark. Not LaGuardia? Not LaGuardia. Why not LaGuardia? Why not LaGuardia? Because they've redone their, they, they have a more recent, I'll let Catherine play. Uh, we're getting more information, but we suspect it is because they were renovated more recently uh, and meet higher standards. Thanks, everybody. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. I appreciate it. Any meeting with the legislative leaders? We've been listening to New York Governor Kathy Hochul and some other state leaders talking about that 4.8 earthquake that hit the tri-state area near New York. We heard the governor breaking down all the different aspects now going into ensuring no significant damage in the area. And I want to bring in our ABC News senior uh, investigative correspondent, Aaron Kaczorski, for more. Because, Aaron, uh, we heard the governor talk about inspecting the subways, inspecting the bridges and tunnels. We, we know there's a ground stop right now still at Newark Airport. The other airports, it sounds like, have resumed normal operations. The roads, dams, transmissions line. What kind of an undertaking is it now to go through the infrastructure of New York City and the tri-state area in general and try to see what, if anything, this earthquake may have damage that could create a domino effect? It's an incredible undertaking, and you heard from both the governor and, uh, and, and from Commissioner Catherine Garcia uh, of emergency management in the state that it was an undertaking that began right away. As soon as they heard that this earthquake had occurred or felt it at 10.23 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, they immediately started dispatching people to check on structural integrity. And that happened almost instantaneously all across the tri-state area. So particular attention, of course, to the airports, uh, JFK and Newark, LaGuardia, she said, didn't need it because it's been renovated recently and built to a, a higher standard. Uh, 
the, the trains, subways, that uh, was immediately inspected. And, and so far, uh, not only is there no uh, report of any kind of significant structural damage, there doesn't seem to be any major disruption to uh, transit network or travel around the area. And I'm sure those on the West Coast are thinking, 4.8, really no big deal. But we just heard the governor say this is the largest earthquake on the East Coast in the last century. And as I mentioned, Newark Airport is currently on a ground stop as they inspect the airport and the way in particular to make sure no damage and to make sure planes can arrive and take off safely. Jackie Foley is on a plane right now on the runway trying to get vacation, but it looks like that uh, that vacation is going to be delayed at least a little bit. Uh, Jackie, talk to me about what you've experienced there. Well, um, we were supposed to take off from Newark to Aruba. Um, we were boarding at 10.30-ish, and right before boarding, the whole airport was swaying. It was really, really scary. And everyone's looking around at each other going, what is happening? Um, and, you know, we did board the flight. However, we are grounded. Um, They're checking the runways, making sure that there's no cracks for uh, takeoff. But we've been informed by our pilot that um, there are plenty of planes that backed up and were ready to go. And we have not left our gate. So um, it's going to be a while. So happy hour at Aruba is on pause. Oh, Jackie, I'm sorry. Talk to me about what went through your mind. You say the whole airport shook. What did you think when that was happening? Oh, God, this is an earthquake. And you how know, did like... people around you, I mean, were people relatively calm or did it seem like people were scared? No, everyone was freaked out and looking at each other going, what, you know, what's going on? And what the, just happened? The airline employees did they sort of take a, a leadership role trying to calm people down or did they seem like they were scared too um they were kind of looking around and nobody really knew what, you know happened of course all the young people start googling on the phone and figuring out that it you know was in fact an earthquake um but yeah it was really scary the duty free people had come to give everybody their their happy bottles and you know that was all shaking so <laughs> it was a thing Jackie, how do you feel now, sitting on that plane, waiting to see if and when you're going to take off? I wish I was on the 9 o'clock flight that took off. <laughs> <laughs> that cocktail in Aruba probably feels really good right about now. Uh, uh, Jackie, are, are you worried at all? Are you scared at all? No. No. Um, you know, I think uh, we're on the East Coast. We're, we're sharp for tools in the shed, and they'll make sure that everything's safe, and we'll be on our way. Jack, can you see workers on the runway? Can you see anything that's happening uh, there on the tarmac? Um, everything seems a little standstill. Um, it's just a lot of planes waiting. Um, you know, as I said, we didn't even get to push back, so we uh, pulled the short straw. Those those that already had pushed back are going to be in line ahead of us, and the pilot has indicated there's quite a lot. And what kind of instructions at this point are the, the flight attendants and the flight crew giving you? Um, chill out and, uh, you know, we'll be up as soon as we can. A cocktail would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the theme here, Jackie. All right, well, Jackie, I'm glad you're safe. I hope you get that sunshine in Aruba. And regardless, that, that cocktail suit sounds like you really want it. Uh, we appreciate Thank you calling you. in, Jackie. I'm glad Thank you and everyone else there are safe and, of course, just hoping it stays that way. Thanks again for calling in. Thank you. We love ABC. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We love you right back. And we, of course, will have continuing updates right here on ABC News Live throughout the day on that 4.8 magnitude quake that hit the New York Tri-State area and, of course, the day's other top stories as well. We'll be right back. One way to avoid expensive car repair bills is to be a race car driver. The other is endurance. Endurance saved me more than $7,000. Without endurance, breakdowns can cost thousands. With endurance, you're covered. Endurance covers nearly every car on the road. Plus, you pick the mechanic you trust. Act now for $300 off any plan, plus a year of elite benefits and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-855-834-8550 now.
Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh, yes, problem. Need Verizon. Get the new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage. So you can take all the pics. Trade in any iPhone in any condition. Get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce me. Which you do you want to be today? At TJ Maxx, you can afford to turn your closet into a place of endless expression with the quality you deserve, styles you crave, and prices you love. I'm gonna do, do what I do. Max, what makes you, you. Do what I do. Early detection saves lives. That's why it's important for women to undergo screenings to catch potential health issues. Talk to your doctor about your risk factors and to find out which screenings are right for you. Learn more at HealthyDrivenChicago.com. Hey, CoverGirls. <laughs> CoverGirls need no filters. With the new Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence. With skincare meets makeup, burst, and blend for bare skin filter effect. That's all of you. The new Skin Perfector Essence from CoverGirl. When you order from Domino's, you can get more than just pizza for $6.99. You can get specialty chicken, savory pasta, oven-baked Parmesan bread bites, molten lava crunch cakes, and medium two-topping pizzas as well. We didn't stop for pizza, and you don't have to either. Reporting from the devastating mudslides here in Los Angeles, I'm Jacqueline Lee. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Hi, I'm Diane Macedo. We have breaking news. The U.S. Geological Survey is reporting a 4.8 earthquake shook the northeast. The quake was centered near Lebanon, New Jersey, about 45 miles west of New York City and 50 miles north of Philadelphia. The USGS says shaking was widely felt from Washington, D.C. to Maine. The New York Fire Department says there are no initial reports of damage. And people in Baltimore, Philadelphia, Connecticut, and other areas of the East Coast also reported feeling the ground shake. The fire department is being dispatched in Long Valley, New Jersey, for multiple reports of structural damage. ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky joins me now. Aaron, 4.8 is not huge if you think of sort of West Coast standards for an earthquake. But we have the, May, the governor of New York now saying this was the largest earthquake to hit the Northeast in a century. It may not have been. Uh, big enough to cause any structural damage or thankfully any injuries, but it was big enough to be felt widely across the, this part of the Northeast from uh, New York and New Jersey, Connecticut, all the way down to Philly, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. So millions of people felt this sustained shaking for a number of seconds. Uh, and depending on where you were in the tri state, may have depended on how deeply you felt this. We've heard now from the governor of of New York and from a number of other officials that there are no reports of any significant structural damage or any injuries. 911 and other emergency services were overwhelmed with calls and immediately emergency crews were dispatched to check the structural integrity of buildings, the airport runways, uh, the major crossings between New York City, New Jersey and, uh, and New York City and other parts of, of New York. So far, nothing has been found, but there is a concern about aftershocks, and we heard this reflected in the governor's comments, Diane, that people around here just aren't accustomed to earthquakes, so she wanted people to know, should there be an aftershock, duck and cover your neck, uh, get to uh, an interior a wall or, or some other kind of safe, sturdy structure, and hang on. I think you and I would be crawling under this desk if it happened again. It's big. We did hear, we heard the governor also talking about now the inspections that are being done. We're hearing that all uh, airports, with the exception of Newark, are now up and running again, but there was a ground stop on all the airports um, in the area. Newark still has a ground stop in place as they are just checking the runway, checking other areas to make sure all is okay before they resume operations. The mayor also said the subway has to be inspected or was uh, the, the ground stop at the airports, the bridges, the tunnels, you know, the Holland Tunnel was held for a while while they were expecting that. Road Roads, dams, transition lines, so many things that we don't even necessarily think about in our everyday lives. How big is this undertaking now to try to ensure that even though all looks okay on the surface, that there wasn't some other kind of damage that could trickle? And the governor said that that's the assessment that's being done now. It seems like things are safe enough. There isn't any kind of structural damage, but they
they are looking for any tiny fissures that could potentially be impactful down the road. So I would expect that those inspections will continue throughout the day, even though nothing immediately has been found that would warrant any uh, large-scale closures or long-duration-type closures, uh, especially in uh, roadways, the airports, and on the trains and subways. Uh, the epicenter was in Lebanon, New Jersey. Any more from that area? The only thing we've heard is uh, some uh, townships in that part of New Jersey, about, uh, what, 45, 50 miles west of New York City, are, are checking for some minor reports of, of structural damage, and you can see some of the images uh, that have been coming in from home security cameras or other footage uh, about how these things were experienced or felt in, in different parts of, uh, of the area. Uh, there have been some reports of maybe some minor structural damage to a couple of buildings in Newark, New Jersey. We're still waiting on officials to confirm, but so far, again, nothing uh, major from here all the way down to Washington, D.C. And during that press conference with the governor, we also heard there's a potential for aftershocks now, and they are saying those are not forecastable. There's no way to say if, when, and how big those could be. We're so used to the National Weather Service telling us about tornadoes or, or hurricanes or predictable weather events. Uh, it's different with, with earthquakes. And though they do happen from time to time, they're not usually as strong as 4.8, so not as many people uh, felt prior earthquakes. This was a new experience for many, uh, and the governor and other emergency responders wanted to make sure people understood what to do. And Aaron, we're hearing from the WABC meteorologist about this. Uh, let, let's key into their programming for a Very second. Closely, what we know right now, about 1023 this morning, preliminary magnitude 4.8 uh, in Hunter and County, Northeast Hunter and County, just north okay, of I-78. All right, Danny, thank you. You're looking at live pictures right now from Newscopter 7. This is in Lebanon, New Jersey. Danny, this is not too far away from the... That is a look at Lebanon, New Jersey. That was the epicenter, again, of this 4.8 magnitude quake uh, that was felt throughout not just the tri-state area, but all the way, it sounds like, throughout most of the Northeast, if not the entire Northeast. Aaron, how rare is something like this? Because we did have a 1.7 magnitude earthquake in this area just in January. But 4.8 magnitude is rare enough. And now the governor is saying the largest on the East Coast in a century. And to get an earthquake with anything approaching a magnitude of, of five, as this one was, you have to go back uh, to 1737, 1783, and 1884 in New York City. So this was uh, one of the, the largest and, uh, and, and, and most deeply felt earthquakes uh, all around. But again, thankfully, no structural damage, and they did inspect all school buildings because kids are in school in New York City, uh, and, and the public school buildings are, are fine, and, and all the kids are safe, dismissal as usual. And it's those kinds of reassuring alerts that may help, uh, you know, make this a little bit easier to take. And we are seeing the videos come in, and it's, easy, it's interesting to hear the varying stories come in because some people felt nothing. Other people said, I felt something, but I thought, I, one guy said he thought, you know, his neighbor was doing the laundry, which makes you question what's going on with that laundry <laughs> machine or, or maybe that building in general. But some of these videos, you know, it looks like it's pretty dramatic shaking there. And, 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 and it was uh, a longer duration <laughs> than many people may have expected. Some people said it was just a few seconds. Others said it felt like 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds, we'll, we'll get an official word from the U.S. Geological Survey. But when you experience it, it, it does kind of feel like forever because it can be unnerving. We also just got from the U.S. Geological Survey a map of, um, uh, of where the shaking was felt. They had instantly a report from more than 100,000 people. And it may explain why the shaking was felt in, in one area, uh, but not another, even though the areas may be really close together, just based on the, the path of how this travel. Yeah, we heard Yonkers Mayor Mike Spano a little while ago saying it, to him it felt like it went on forever. Um, Adam, what does this do in terms of the conversations around preparedness, right? We're looking there at Lebanon, New Jersey. That was the epicenter, but really all throughout this area, kids on the West Coast, as of a young age in school, they go through drills all the time. Our own senior producer, Ashley, from California, she's saying, you know, we regularly had drills teaching us exactly what to do in a situation like this. If you grew up on the East Coast like I did, you did not get those kind of lessons. And we heard the mayor of Yonkers saying, you know, just a little while ago, maybe it's time to revisit that. And, and I think that what we may hear that from other officials as well, just to get 
either school kids or, or anybody, too. anybody familiar with what to do in the event of, a, of an earthquake. Because, as you say, you grow up around here and, and that's just not part of the repertoire for what could potentially uh, happen. So uh, the, the whole duck and cover is a, is a new experience, perhaps, for some people. All right. Uh, we, of course, are going to stay on top of this again. 4.8 magnitude earthquake hit the northeast around 1030 this morning. Some inspections are still underway. Newark Airport is at a ground stop to assure that there is no damage there that could make it, make it unsafe to fly. And now we're hearing from New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Let's listen. That's uh, Fabian. Thank you all for joining us today at New York City Emergency Management Headquarters. I'm Fabian Levy, Deputy Mayor for Communications for the City of New York. Earlier this morning, New York City and surrounding regions experienced a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. While we are still assessing the impact of this incident, we currently do not have reports of major impacts at this time. Our teams moved quickly to coordinate across city and state agencies and make sure that New Yorkers were safe. We've brought together key leaders to provide people with more information about earthquake and ongoing efforts. So we're joined today by Mayor Eric Adams, Chief Advisor to the Mayor Ingrid Lewis Martin, Chief of Staff Camille Joseph Harlick, Emergency Management Commissioner Zach Iskell, Police Department Commissioner Edward Caban, and senior uh, members of the NYPD leadership, FDNY Commissioner Laura Kavanaugh, Public Schools Chancellor David Banks, Department of Buildings Commissioner Jimmy Otto, Department of Sanitation Commissioner Jessica Tisch, Department of Transportation Commissioner Yadon Rodriguez, Department of Environmental Protection Commissioner Ray Agawal, Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs Commissioner Manny Castro, Housing Preservation and Development Commissioner Adolfo Carrion, Mayor's Office of Community Affairs Commissioner Fred Priceman, New York City Health and Hospital Senior Vice President and Chief Quality Officer Dr. Eric Way, NYCHA Executive VP of Operations Support Services Keith Grossman, MPA CEO General Lieber, Con Ed President Match Ketchy. So first, I'd like to uh, introduce Mayor Adams. Thanks so much, Dean Levy, and I'm sure there are many questions uh, that uh, need to be answered. Uh, all of us uh, felt in some way or another uh, the earthquake that hit our city uh, around 10.23 a.m. Uh, we felt the impact of this 4.7 magnitude earthquake, the epicenter I was in Lebanon, New Jersey, about 50 miles from New York City. Um, and as you know, this is a developing uh, situation. Uh, you always concerned about aftershocks after an earthquake. But New Yorkers should go about their normal day. Uh, first responders are working to make sure the city is safe. And one thing we do uh, so well in our city is bring together all of the agencies that are involved and our partners and other entities. Uh, everything from the MTA uh, to uh, the Department of Buildings, uh, the parents who are concerned about uh, their school children, uh, Chancellor Banks uh, would be here to report on that. But we see over and over again, the safest place for our students, uh, we believe, will continue to be in school. At this point, we do not have any reports of major impacts to our infrastructure or injuries. But of course, we're still assessing the situation and we'll continue to update the public. We're in touch with the White House, the governor's office, and local elected officials. And I encourage New Yorkers to check on uh, their loved ones to make sure that they are fine, not only from the infrastructure damage, but this could be a traumatic moment for individuals going through uh, an earthquake. And if you feel an aftershock, the drop to the floor, cover your head and neck, and take cover under a solid uh, piece of furniture next to an interior wall or in a doorway. And so I want to thank the emergency staff and first responders uh, for their work to keep New Yorkers safe. Uh, earthquakes don't happen every day in New York, 
Uh, so this can be extremely traumatic. The number of text calls and inquiries uh, that people uh, sent out to not only our administration, but to family members checking on them. Uh, we know how this can impact you. But we're ready for the unexpected. This is New York City, and we respond accordingly. And we will continue to update New Yorkers as we get more information. I would now turn it over to uh, Commissioner Isco. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to my colleagues uh, for their quick and speedy response to this. Uh, I'm pleased to report that there are currently no impact, no major impact or safety events related to this earthquake. We're asking all New Yorkers to call 311 to report damage uh, or any uh, issues that you're having. Um, also, if you have any need for disaster assistance uh, due to damage or anything like that, please call 311. That is the best place to uh, to refer those those needs. If you have a life safety issue, uh, please use and call 911 immediately, but preserve 911 for those life safety events. Uh, the team acted immediately. We convened an imme our emergency response teams and issued guidance to the public. Uh, the likelihood of aftershocks remain low, uh, but we do remain vigilant, and we ask all New Yorkers to remain vigilant as well. Uh, we activated our protocols for this earthquake. We immediately started coordinating with all city, state, federal, and our utility partners. Uh, public notifications were sent out both by Notify NYC and our wireless emergency alert system. You can hear some of the phone buzzings um, in delays from that that have been issued. Uh, as soon as it happened, we convened here at New York City Emergency Management uh, in order to be able to send out guidance. Uh, we activated, um, I mean, we convened here at NYSEM to send out our guidance for what happens during an earthquake, including on the possibility of aftershocks. Uh, we contacted our city hall and agency commissioners, as well as all of our partners at the federal and state level. Uh, that also includes all of our utility partners, our transportation partners at the MTA, Port Authority, uh, and the airports. Uh, while there is a low likelihood uh, that there will be aftershocks, uh, we always want to be uh, on the safe side. So if you are outside during an aftershock, please move to an open area away from buildings, trees, and power lines. Uh, if you are driving, pull over to a safe location. Uh, we're asking people to check in on their relatives, on their loved ones, uh, neighbors, especially the children and the uh, and their uh, their individuals. I think that this is also an incredible time just to remind us all to make sure that we're prepared. So if you are a New Yorker, uh, if you're visiting New York, we encourage you to sign up for Notify NYC. This is available in 14 languages, including American Sign Language, over a million subscribers. You can sign up by calling 311, you can call up by downloading the app, or by going to nyc.gov backslash notify. We also encourage people to make sure that they have an emergency kit and to make sure that they know the guidance for earthquakes, which as the mayor said, uh, to drop cover uh, and to get under um, furniture, sturdy furniture, or uh, in a doorway uh, to make sure that you are safe. Uh, please also make sure that you're checking your util utilities, that you know how to turn them on and off, um, especially if you are a property owner. With that said, who are we turning it over to? Chancellor Banks. Chancellor Banks. I'll turn it over to Chancellor Banks uh, for an update on the schools. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so the earthquake was felt um, across the entire city and across uh, many of our schools uh, across all five boroughs. In fact, I was at LaGuardia a High School at an event um, uh, this morning when uh, the earthquake hit. I did not personally feel it, but many people in the room uh, felt it. Uh, so first and foremost, what's most important to understand is we want to emphasize that we've received no reports of any injury um, to staff or students. Uh, and that's the most important thing, and safety is our top priority in ensuring that everyone uh, is safe in our schools. Immediately following the earthquake, our teams, both within New York City Public Schools and across the city, immediately jumped into action. Uh, we've been in close and constant communication with City Hall, with the Office of Emergency Management, School Construction Authority, and other agencies as well. So at this moment, the, there is no indication 
that any of our buildings were compromised. Uh, and our facility staff at the School Construction Authority are quickly and thoroughly inspecting buildings to ensure a safety. And out of an abundance of caution, we've assembled all of our building response teams as well. So we've instructed all of our school principals um, to continue operation and dismissal as normal. We ask the school staff and families to remain calm and to model that for all of our students, all of our children. Parents do not need to pick up their child early as a result of today's earthquake. Additionally, all after-school programs will continue as planned. If conditions change, our schools will communi communicate directly with families. We also will post updates on our social media pages, which can be found at NYC Schools. I want to thank all of our school staff and our facility staff for keeping our students safe during times like these. Their professionalism in the face of an emergency is a role model for all of our students. Again, the top lines, all of our students across the school system are safe. All of our staff are safe. We have no reports of any structural damage to any of our school facilities, while many schools in, felt, in fact felt some tremors uh, from the earthquake. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Chancellor. Next, we'll hear from Buildings Commissioner Jimmy Otto. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, let me say uh, right at the outset that we at the Department of Buildings have not seen an influx of calls regarding uh, building damage. Uh, but we want all New Yorkers to know that our, our team is ready. We are putting on additional uh, construction and engineering professionals uh, from this point on over the weekend. Uh, so if reports do come in, uh, we will be ready to respond. Our construction enforcement unit is out doing inspections similarly similar to what we do prior to big storms. There are 1.1 million buildings in the city, which means we need cooperation from construction professionals. We've messaged that to them, but let me take this opportunity again to remind all of our construction professionals, you need to go out and check on your buildings, even if those sites are closed and, um, if, and determine that the sites are secure. And if you see any conditions that are troublesome, please uh, reach out to the department. Uh, this is a time for that tried and true saying, if you see something, say something. So to New Yorkers, we at the Department of Buildings are concerned about some of the downstream possibilities, cracks that you might see that, that may materialize or manifest in a week or a month or um, scaffolding, uh, retaining walls. If you see something that is problematic, please call 311. Uh, this weekend, we will have... Uh, an increase in our emergency response team. We've mobilized our borough operations and our special ops folks so that if our sister agency, the fire department, or any of our um, partners in government or the public uh, report an increase in locations, we are at uh, the ready uh, to respond. Thank you, Commissioner. Next, we'll hear from Con Ed President Matt Ketchke. So thank you. So for our energy delivery system, energy infrastructure, there were no impacts from this event. Um, we continue to monitor them. Our critical energy infrastructure is continuously monitored. During the course of the event, we saw no change in status for our energy infrastructure. Um, we do have um, a series of protocols for after another quick event. We have initiated those. Those involve inspecting our critical facilities and working through all our facilities for inspection. Those inspections are ongoing. We haven't identified any issues. Um, in the case of an earthquake, one of the things that from the energy side we would be concerned about is the potential for gas leaks. So I encourage if you smell gas, either call 911 or 1-800-75-CONED, report the gas leak. Do not assume that somebody else has reported. So if you smell gas, call us or call 911 immediately. Otherwise, we'll continue our inspections and all looks good. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Next, we'll hear from MTA CEO, Jan Lieber. 
Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mayor Adams, Commissioner Riscoll. I want to reassure New Yorkers that the, the service on the transit system, all aspects of the transit system, maintained continuously operating safely throughout uh, the incident and has continued right to now. Um, I've been in touch with the president of all the MTA agencies, starting with Bridges and Tunnels. Kathy Sheridan, the president of MTA Bridges and Tunnels, is here, but also New York City Transit, Long Island Railroad, and Metro North. Initial inspections of all the facilities have been completed and there are initial further inspections ongoing, emphasizing that the seven bridges operated by MTA have been uh, inspected, and I want to emphasize those were designed to withstand much stronger uh, seismic impacts than we experienced today. Our frontline staff across the system have been instructed to report any abnormality, abnormalities. There have been none uh, so far flagged. And of course, we're going to continue to monitor the situation very, very closely. We have an open communications bridge with all of our MTA agencies to report, as I said, any abnormality that they encounter. So far, the, uh, the input on that has been zero. Um, we're going to let riders know if there are any impacts to service, but there are none. Just as the chancellor said, the school system is operating fully, uh, so is the MTA transit system. Uh, without disruptions caused by the earthquake. I want to thank Mayor Adams, your entire team, and also Governor Hochul, with whom I've been in touch, for their leadership uh, throughout this challenging moment for the city and the region. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, finally, we'll hear from Manny Castro from the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs for, for a few words in Spanish. Muy buenas tardes, soy Manuel Castro, el comisionado de Asuntos de los Migrantes de la Ciudad de Nueva York. We've been listening to New York City Mayor Eric Adams and other city leaders urging New Yorkers, if you see something, say something, a phrase we have become quite familiar with over the years. But in this case, for an unusual reason, is asking the people of New York to look out for any signs of damage for what they call political potential downstream effects from this 4.8 magnitude earthquake. So far, no signs of any major damage, they say, no signs of any injuries, uh, but that doesn't mean we couldn't see trickle effects from this. I want to bring in our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky, for more on this. Aaron, what did you make of that press conference? Well, I think it reflects what we've been hearing, that there are no major issues, structural damage, injuries, uh, schools are okay, kids in school are okay, uh, and that uh, all of the, the infrastructure they've been able to, to look at so far seems to be safe. I think, as you pick up on, you heard the buildings commissioner in the city, Jimmy Otto, uh, talk about construction supervisors taking a look at their sites and, and going over them uh, quite significantly so that they can find any potential crack or something that they think might develop and they want the, the buildings department to be able to uh, know about it and, and take a look if necessary. Yeah, you think of how much construction goes on in this city on a daily basis, how much scaffolding around the city, quite an undertaking there to make sure all of that is now secure. I, and I want to bring in Angie Lux, an earthquake scientist at Berkeley Seismological Laboratory for more on this. Angie, you're an expert here. What do you make of hearing a 4.8 magnitude earthquake of this size hitting the Northeast? This is definitely one of the larger earthquakes that have happened in this area for a long time. Um, it's an uncommon event in that area, but it's not something that's impossible. So as we see on our seismic hazard maps, there's, there, we knew there was a possibility of earthquakes in this area. Um, and so this is, this is just that earthquake um, that it's happened, yeah. Uh, what kind of damage can a 4.8 magnitude earthquake cause? 4.8 can cause some damage, it depends on where you are, where the earthquake is, and the type of infrastructure around you. So for you guys over on the west, east coast, the ground is a lot harder. It's older rock. And so the waves will actually travel further than they would do on the west coast. So that's something that we know. Um, we don't expect to see a whole lot of damage, but there's a possibility that there may be some minor damage. All right. Angie Lux from the Berkeley Seismological Lab. We appreciate your time today, Angie. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And we'll have continuing updates right here on ABC News Live and throughout the day. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. One way to avoid expensive car repair bills is to be a race car driver. The other is endurance. Endurance saves me more than $7,000. Without endurance, breakdowns can cost thousands. With endurance, you're covered. Endurance covers nearly every car on the road. 
Plus, you pick the mechanic you trust. Act now for $300 off any plan, plus a year of elite benefits and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-833-496-4043. Now. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? <laughs> no problem. Thanks. Ooh, yes, problem. You need Verizon. Get the new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage. So you can take all the pics. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. Ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce me. Which you do you want to be today? At TJ Maxx, you can afford to turn your closet into a place of endless expression. With the quality you deserve, styles you crave, and prices you love. I'm gonna do, do what I do. Max, what makes you, you. Do what I do. Hey, cover girls. <laughs> <laughs> Cover girls need no filters. With the new Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence. Where skincare meets makeup. First and blend. For bare skin filter effect. That is all you. The new Skin Perfector Essence from CoverGirl. When you order from Domino's, you can get more than just pizza. You can get specialty chicken, savory pastas, oven-baked Parmesan bread bites, molten lava crunch cakes, medium two-topping pizzas as well. We didn't stop at pizza, and you don't have to either. Ooh, number seven future new day cream. Reverses damage. What, like from sleeping in my makeup? Reverse visible skin damage with a world first peptide technology. Who's got damage besides all of us? Don't regret, just reverse. I guess I'm not the easiest person to please. I like things just right. That's why I love Redfin. They show me homes that are perfect for me. Not too big, not too small. Yeah. It's like they know me. I mean, the bears love having me here. Oh. We're like family. You want to know it sucks, but it's time for me to spread my wings and find a place of my own. Ooh, <gasps> this one's just right. I know baby bear will miss me. Here's to good mornings in America. Can you feel the love? Oh, yeah. Mornings that inspire with hope, kindness, joy, and surprises, and so much fun. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Start your day with Good Morning America's Ray of Sunshine. Highlighting the best of America and hoping... The dreams come true. Wow. I'm just so happy. This is so good. Get ready to smile and put the good into your morning, America, because... You know what will make the morning better? A little Ray of Sunshine. You're watching America's number one streaming news. ABC News Live. Breaking news. Exclusives. Live reporting across the globe. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. Hi, I'm Dan Macedo. We have breaking news. The U.S. Geological Survey is reporting a 4.8 earthquake shook the northeast. The quake was centered in Lebanon, New Jersey, about 45 miles west of New York City, 50 miles north of Philadelphia. New York Governor Kathy Hochul says aftershocks are possible and unpredictable, so leaders in the area are urging everyone to be on alert. New York City officials say so far no structural damage reported in all aspects of transit, like bridges, trains, and subways, have all been deemed safe. Let's listen. It's very early in the assessment process, but, you know, if there is an after effect, please stay away from buildings, especially our high rises. If you hear shifting or any noises, unusual noises, leave your home. Go outside. You are safer there than in a building that could be crumbling around you. Inspect your home for damage. Check walls, floors, doors, windows, staircases. And uh, if you see any damage at all, you may need to relocate uh, while the event is going on. And again, that was New York Governor Kathy Holgold talking about that earthquake, which was centered near Lebanon, New Jersey, about 45 miles west of New York City. And right now we have New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy on the phone for more. Uh, Governor, we appreciate your time. I know it's a busy one for you. Um, but talk me through this. I know you just spoke with President Biden. What can you tell us about that conversation? Good to be out with you, Diane. Listen, as always, uh, in a time of crisis, uh, the president is there. Uh, he knows Jersey cold. He reached out and said, listen, whatever you need, money uh, to correct or rebuild or otherwise, uh, don't hesitate. So to, to him, I say thank you. And his entire administration, FEMA, obviously, and other, other branches of government we've been in deep conversations with over the past couple of hours and continue to be there for us, and particularly in a moment of need. 
And Governor, we know, I uh, heard at least one of your local fire departments was dispatched uh, for reports of structural damage. Uh, what's the latest you can tell us in terms of potential damage from this earthquake in New Jersey? Well, I'm not going to wood when I say this, but so far, so good. We have limited uh, uh, calls or reports of damage. Uh, that's not to say there isn't any, um, and we're still gathering information now with two plus hours. After the fact, we have the risk, as, as you've heard, for of aftershocks. We saw, you know, in the in the much more severe situation in Taiwan a few days ago, several hundred aftershocks. I don't think we're going to be in that territory. Um, but so far, limited damage. And uh, but I want folks to keep a level head and use common sense here, particularly in the next several hours. Governor, what are you hearing from constituents in Lebanon, where the epicenter of this quake was? Our folks have been in touch. Uh, I've not heard directly from anybody, but we've been in touch with the folks locally, both in Lebanon and in the county. Um, and uh, again, so far, so good. Um, things are getting slowly but surely back to normal. The ground stop at Newark Airport has been lifted. The, the air train uh, is still, uh, they're still expecting that, so they're using shuttle buses. And a transit's running, 20 minutes behind schedule, but running. So we're slowly but surely getting back on our feet. Uh, New York Governor Kathy Hochul warned that aftershocks could still pose a danger. How are you preparing for that possibility? Well, I, I think I heard her remarks, and I think she was right on, on the money. And, and I think the most important advice to folks is use common sense. Uh, if you're in a in a structure that has damage uh, or is unstable, you should be getting out of there uh, and just use your head. We don't have the we don't have the exception of places like Jersey City. Uh, we don't have the high rise reality and the concentration uh, that New York City has. But still, again, common sense, particularly if you're in a, in a damaged uh, situation. Just a little while ago, I spoke to the mayor of Yonkers, Mike Spano. He's been mayor there for a while now, and he says, you know, we talk about a lot of weather events, but we don't really talk about earthquakes in this part of the country. Does that have you rethinking? Does this event have you rethinking the level of preparedness we might need to revisit? You know, everything down to just teaching people what to do, where to go, how to react when something like this happens? You have to say yes. I mean, you've got to learn from each one of these situations. We. We, we pride ourselves on doing full bore postmortems. We just had, had an independent assessment of our COVID uh, of policies and procedures and that, that ran to 900 pages. So uh, we, we, we live, we learn, uh, and that's going to be the same thing here. Uh, this is not something that's high on the list of what you're expecting, um, uh, but we got to make sure that we don't, uh, you don't have to relive history and, and, and go through the same pain again. Governor Burphy, we also just heard from the department of Buildings Commissioner here in New York City, and he's urging people, if you see something, say something, saying there are concerns about down, downstream effects, meaning a small bit of damage, what appears to be small, to a building, to scaffolding, to a dam, what, you know, whatever it may be, could just be the first ingredient in what turns into a domino effect. So how yeah. worried are you now about maybe some smaller damage that's not immediately being spotted but could grow down the road. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's absolutely right. Uh, again, we don't have the concentration of the high-rise reality that New York City has, but that doesn't mean we don't have them. And, uh, and his point is, is a good one. So, again, I would just ask everybody to use common sense. Uh, in fact, uh, your, your homes, your offices, wherever you might be. Um, again, we're hearing very limited reports of damage at this point, but that doesn't mean that there isn't uh, a reality out there and that folks should, again, um, do the, the smart, sensible, common sense thing and, and uh, when it out, call it in. Mayor, what's your big takeaway from this event? Governor, excuse me. Sorry, you know, oh, I, I thought you were the mayor. But I'm, a big <laughs> takeaway is you never know what's around the corner. Um, and uh, you, you, you rightfully said a couple of minutes ago, uh, earthquakes is not high on the list of things you wake up expecting. And I think that's, this is a good wake-up call for all of us, that we're going to make sure that we live and learn from this and that uh, we're, we're prepared as we can be uh, going forward. Sure do. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy, we appreciate your time today, Governor. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Diane. I want to bring back our senior investigative correspondent, Erica Tursky, for a little bit more. Uh, Aaron, I see these emails are still coming in. What's the latest? Well, Governor Murphy is saying that there is some 
report of limited damage in New Jersey. It's the first indication anywhere in the, the tri-state or, or wider northeast of, of any damage whatsoever from this 4.8 magnitude earthquake that's centered in his state. He talked about Lebanon, New Jersey, and the, the wider county, Hunterdon County, which is about 50 miles west of New York City, where this quake was centered. Uh, and, and he is saying that he's urging people there and elsewhere to inspect their properties for any sign of damage, something echoed by the New York City Buildings Commissioner, who wants uh, building supervisors and construction site supervisors to check their sites and their buildings for any sign uh, of, of even the smallest damage that could materialize later on. Right now, though, no significant reports of any damage in New York City and only limited damage in New Jersey. Aaron, we also heard the governor point out, you know, in my state, I don't have the kind of high-rise concentration that New York City is dealing with. What if this epicenter is right here in the city? I mean, what does it do for concerns to have a quake like this the epicenter be so close uh, to New York City? And, and now these questions about preparedness. And, and the, the path is really interesting is the U.S. Geological Survey is trying to find people who felt it in, in millions undoubtedly did just because of, of the nature of the densely uh, populated area that the Northeast is. Uh, it, it took a path that wound its way uh, from, from that central part of New Jersey uh, through into Westchester County uh, and, and maybe skirted different parts uh, of New York City. It's a really interesting map that the U.S. Geological Survey is working with right now. Uh, and, and so thankfully, none of the buildings appear to have sustained any, uh, any damage. But the, the, the codes for, for building in New York City don't necessarily take earthquakes into effect, especially the older ones. And Governor Murphy, uh, as he says, does not have the, the, uh, the, the high-rise concentration that, that New York does. But certain places in New Jersey, certainly New Jersey City mm -hmm. and Newark, for example, and, and a lot of uh, older structures in those locations as well. It was interesting to hear the earthquake expert we had on just a little while ago explaining that you know, this earthquake, obviously mild compared to a West Coast style earthquake, so many that we report on. Uh, but she says the, the ground is harder here. And so when those when the, the quake hits, it sort of spreads farther. The, those, those impacts spread farther than they do in the kind of softer ground that they generally see on the West Coast. And that explains why this was felt from, you know, all the way up to Buffalo, New York, according to Governor Kathy Hochul, and all the way down to Washington, D.C. But yeah. thankfully, in that entire area of the whole Northeast Corridor, there had not been any significant reports uh, of any damage. School buildings made made fine. Kids are okay in the, in the public school in New York City, according to the... Uh, the Commissioner to the, the Chancellor of the New York City Department of Education. That was something that may ease the concerns of parents. Uh, and we heard from transit officials that the subways and the trains are also fine. It sounds like the main concern now, from what we heard from New York City leaders in that press conference, is what the Department of Buildings called these downstream effects. The potential that a little bit of damage to some scaffolding or, or some damage somewhere else could turn into a larger problem if it's not identified quickly. And that's why the, these uh, kinds of structural inspections are going to be happening throughout the entire day. They, they've been able to, to identify the big things in the transit system, at the bridges and tunnels, at the airports and the runways, uh, and, and make sure that major infrastructure is up and running now. But they want individual property owners and, and building site owners just to go through and make sure everything's okay and to call it in if they see something that, that uh, might have risk of developing later on. And it does sound like they're going through that pretty quickly. The Holland Tunnel is back open again after being paused. We just heard the governor of New Jersey say that Newark Airport has now resumed operations. They had been at a ground stop. The New York airports are also resumed operations. So they've inspected all those areas and determined they are safe to resume operations. The big concern now seems to be aftershocks in addition to those potential downstream effects. What are you watching for on that front? Yeah, and what does that tell us? That tells us that there, there uh, really aren't any reports of, of anything significant, uh, but there is a concern because earthquakes, especially ones this big, as you say, not very big for a place like Southern California, but but significant uh, for, for the Northeast, mm. uh, make people aware of what to do because those duck and cover drills that they do elsewhere are, aren't done here in, in, in schools in, in the Northeast by and large. So you heard both the mayor, the governor, Governor Murphy of New Jersey, to, uh, if there is an aftershock, to uh, drop to the floor, cover your neck, and hold on to something sturdy. Yeah, we also heard the governor or the mayor say, get away from any high-rise buildings. Difficult to do if you are in Manhattan, so we're going to need a little more guidance maybe as we 
as we go out uh, from this event, some of the lessons learned perhaps is that we on the East Coast need a little more knowledge on what to do in an earthquake. Uh, and uh, as we mentioned, I just want to repeat, all ground stops at local airports have now been lifted. Uh, so those airports are resuming operations. I'm sure great news for so many spring break travelers and eclipse travelers uh, trying to get on with their trips and, and good news for anyone worried about safety, of course. So we are going to continue monitoring the story. We will have continuing updates right here on ABC News Live throughout the day. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. One way to avoid expensive car repair bills is to be a race car driver. The other is endurance. Endurance saved me more than $7,000. Without endurance, breakdowns can cost thousands. With endurance, you're covered. Endurance covers nearly every car on the road. Plus, you pick the mechanic you trust. Act now for $300 off any plan, plus a year of elite benefits and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-833-496-4043. Now. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh, yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage. So you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. none yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. Marshall's buyers have a very particular set of skills. They can hunt down the latest trends. Double denim is back. So chic. And take quality very, very seriously. So random. They're highly trained deal-making professionals who travel far and wide to hustle the best of the best for you. We get the deals. You get the good stuff. Marshall's. Smoking gave me peripheral artery disease. Later, I got kidney cancer. I used to laugh when people would tell me I was going to die from smoking. I would say, well, at least I'll have fun doing it. Well, here's a tip. It turns out living with smoking-related disease is no fun. No fun at all. You can quit. For free help, text quit now to 333888. She's not the easiest person to please, right, Mama? She needs things to be just right. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we do love her. That's my mug, isn't it? But she needs a place of her own, and fast. Thankfully, she's on Redfin. <sighs> Redfin updates their listings every two minutes. That means every two minutes, there's a chance we'll be back to having our porridge in peace. Oh, wow. This one's just right. Is she leaving? Yes. Oh, it's happening. It's it is happening. This is Cassie. She never really paid attention to her credit scores until she got Credit Karma and used her scores to score more, like her first ride. When it was time to upgrade, she shopped around for a lower auto insurance rate to go with it. Even when she decided to blaze a new trail, Credit Karma helped her with an auto loan to get her where she was going. Where is she going? Into a Credit Karma. Download the free money app where your hard work pays off. Welcome back. We are following breaking news. A 4.8 earthquake hit the Northeast uh, earlier this morning. Officials say only limited damage has been reported so far, but they are warning of potential aftershocks and so-called downstream effects. New York City officials say all subways, bridges and tunnels and airports have been deemed safe so far. We will have much more on that throughout the day, but we also want to get to some of the day's other top stories, including the IDF now releasing some new details of their account of the deadly airstrike that killed seven aid workers in Gaza. The IDF says it misidentified an aid worker in the convoy as a Hamas gunman and has since fired two officers. The IDF also admits the aid workers correctly coordinated with the IDF the night they were killed. World Central Kitchen, the organization that those workers worked for, is calling for an independent investigation, saying the IDF cannot credibly investigate its own failures. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the U.S. is now reviewing the IDF's report. 
Uh, it's very important that Israel is taking full responsibility for this incident. It's also important that it appears to be taking steps to hold those responsible uh, accountable. Uh, even more important is making sure that steps are taken going forward to ensure that something like this can never happen again.